today or tonight I should be saying, I will be showing you how I transformed our spare closet, which I lost all the before footage of, of how messy it was, our quote unquote cleaning closet, into an actual one-stop shop for all my cleaning necessities in my home. Before we get started, truth be told, I haven't been uploading on Wednesdays, you all know that, and that's because projects are starting to take a lot longer than anticipated, and this closet was no different. I was literally working on it until three o'clock today and editing it up until like literally nine o'clock till you're seeing it right now. So let's just get started. With any room that I'm painting, I always tape and tarp the floor, but now even if I'm not painting it, I just naturally tape and tarp it because of the amount of debris that's gonna be falling. So that's the first step on this guy. Since we are starting fresh, you know I like to take every single thing off of the wall that doesn't need to be there and patch it on up with whole filler and just get the walls back to basics, back to its original form, no holes, no nothing, so we can just head in to painting. Somebody come take the white paint away from me. I just have so much left that I don't wanna go and buy a new paint color and try to test things out. I'm just, it just, I have no patience and I have no time quite frankly. So I just painted this guy with a nice flat white because that matches the laundry room that is directly across from it. If you are painting, I like to wrap my roller in plastic so that way I can cover it in between coats and also I use a trash bag to line my paint tray. That way in between coats, I can just fold it on over and not have to worry about it drying out. While the paint is drying, I'm going to go ahead and cut some wood down for some shelving that I would like to add. And there's a weird double angle on the far right side of this small closet that I just, I can never figure out angles. I'm not very good at it. So I DIY a cardboard cutout. That way I can just place it on top of my wood, trace and cut, and it will fit nice and snug. I am going to be building two shelves that will sit on brackets, which are super easy. I've done them before on my channel. These will be 18 inches long. And then my large and in charge one that will go wall to wall is going to be supported by wood into studs and just, it's gonna be different, but I will be using this template for all three and cutting it down with my handsaw and just sanding out the edges to smooth it out and then painting them all a flat white to match the wall. For the shelf that I want to make super long and extend just like the one that is already existing in my closet, I mimicked exactly how it was done. Obviously not as well because I'm not a shelf like professional, but to the best of my ability, I just cut down these one by threes to size of my shelf. Again, I have this angle at the end. If you do not, which I hope you don't, it makes life a lot easier. I cut out a triangle of one of my scrap pieces of wood and just ensured that it fit nice and snug up against that one by three and the actual shelf itself. And then measured that back piece that I needed and put a piece of scrap wood that fit perfectly. I screwed a couple of holes thinking that's what I needed to do to attach these two pieces, but realistically it's not holding a ton of weight. I am going to just screw one screw through the middle into the back of that triangle that is going to be facing the wall and then nail gun the rest. And then I will take that middle screw out because if I leave that screw there, that piece of wood will not be flush to the wall and it will make things teeter a bit. We have the middle situation figured out. Now we need to go in and pre-drill holes into those one by threes because again, if you do not, you run the risk of splitting these pieces and that is not what we're looking for when we go to hang these puppies up. I painted all of the wood you just saw me work with a flat white. I came back to the closet and painted the rail a flat black. I'm not gonna be hanging up clothes in here and you'll see why in a little bit. It's just what works for my house, but that's what I'm doing, a black and white theme. A beautiful mess is the one to contribute this next DIY to because it is absolutely genius. I didn't want a paper wallpaper, so I decided to make wall stamps. I linked them down below so you can read the full tutorial, but essentially you cut out some craft foam into the shape that you want. You do multiple layers of it and glue that directly onto a piece of cardboard. That is what creates the stamp itself. You can make them as large as you want to, as small as you want to, but something that I learned is if you're not doing it onto a flat surface, you will have to go in and repaint it. But again, I will show that a little bit later. Thank you, A Beautiful Mess, because it is genius. I mimicked a wallpaper design that is insanely expensive for legitimately $2 right here crazy. I showcase how I made this move so quickly, quote unquote, today by Instagram story and timestamping my all nighter last night to prep to film for this video. So that's kind of what you're seeing, what I'm doing here. I'm letting things dry and I'm coming in and installing this closet made for the door for all my cleaning product, which again, I've linked everything I've used that I purchased down below for you. 
When the walls were dry, I went ahead and came in with my stamps. I painted them and just used them like regular old stamps. Again, they didn't fully transfer to the wall since it is a rough surface. It is not a flat surface, it is textured. That is why I went back in and I decided to paint over, kind of bite the bullet if you will, because I didn't want to have to do this. But I painted two extra coats of black around the stamps that were already stamped on the wall to make sure that the black looked very solid. Moving on to shelving, this is nothing special, you guys. This is just your basic run-of-the-mill shelving. You wanna make sure that you're supporting the weight in which you are anticipating it holding. Mine is holding paper towels and literally like nothing. So I made sure I went into drywall anchors if necessary and studs. I hung up my one by threes and then covered the holes with some wood filler. I don't like paint and patch for this part. And then I let that dry and moved on to my other shelving. For the brackets, the same thing. I linked my video that I've gone in depth about this with, but we'll move back on to sanding down the wood filler in the one by threes we just put on and then putting the main shelving on top of that and screwing it into place and then going in and painting over the wood filler, the wall color, that way it all kind of blends together looking like one piece. The base of the closet is done and now it is time to accessorize. Like I always say, this is my house, these are my humans, this is how I run my life, so this is what I am using. It is all linked down below for you. If you wanna use something different, go for it. It is up to you, but this is what works for my home. I decided to place some party dollar store baskets to organize all of the party supplies that we use for events throughout the year. And then again with candles because we use candles all the time throughout our household and that's just something I like to have on hand but not looking like a mess. I use shoe organizers to kind of lift all my storage off of the floor just because I, I realized I had a lot of dust bunnies and it bothered me. But moving on, all in all, this is what I have right now. I ended up cleaning this closet so well. I have so much empty space to add more cleaning supplies if necessary. This door caddy really comes in handy. I highly recommend it. It just is a one-stop shop for all of us humans. If they need anything instead of me saying like the kitchen bottom left drawer to the sink it's like the cleaning closet and they know what's up while this doesn't look like much I'm not gonna lie this was a huge overhaul it definitely is a weekend project like Friday Saturday Sunday giving yourself some rest I really want to recognize that I've been lagging on my schedule. I've been lagging on staying consistent. And this is just me holding myself accountable and saying thank you guys for once again tuning in, for watching, for supporting, and just, you know, handling your girl on this dream of hers. I have so much more coming. I'm so pumped to be back on track. And I cannot wait to see what you guys want to do in 2019. So comment down below. Let me know what you're interested in. I have a few ideas. But again, I want to curate everything for you guys. Love you. Thank you so much. See you next Wednesday for another DIY.